this video, I want to talk about a binomial experiment. Other than that, I want to bring up a very important argument. So if you look at the binomial formula, the first factor is an n choose x, right? You have n trial and you want to choose x number of success. So that is a combination. My argument is why is that a combination? Why is, how can we don't use permutation? Why? We want to explain that in this video. So first of all, my experiment is simple. I flip a fair coin three times and I want to let x be the number of heads and then based on what we studied in the past so we can easily set up the sample space so the way I do the counting is I start with three heads and then I change the last head to a tail and then I move the t to the left hand side one step at a time so that gives me three distinct outcomes and then I change the last two heads to two tails and then I move the h to the right one step at a time and then the last one uh, I have a 3x so that is definitely a typo so this one is supposed to be tail 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 so the last one is no head so we start with three head and then the next part is one head the next part is two heads and then the next part is one head and then the last part is zero head so uh, there are eight outcomes in this sample space because each coin has two faces so three coins two times two times two that is equal to eight and then we have a binomial distribution table so i have x can be no head one head two three heads two or three heads so what is the probability that we get no head so look at the sample space no head means or tail right so tail 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 so that is one of the eight outcomes so we have one out of eight and then one head so one head is uh the ht and then tht and then tth right so that is one head so that is three out of eight outcomes and then what about two heads so the two heads that would be hht and then hth and then THH, right? So that will be three out of eight. And then the last one, three heads, so that will be all H. So that is uh, one over eight. So the sum is, what is the sum equals to? The sum is equals to eight over eight. That is just equals to one. So the sum of all the probabilities equals to one. And then each X has its associated probability. So we call this the binomial distribution of the random variable X, all right? Now, uh, we have to use the binomial formula. Why? Because this problem is small. We only have three coins. What if I f we only have three flips, right? So I'll flip a coin three times. What if I flip a coin seven times, 10 times, 15 times, 20 times, then the sample space will be huge. So when the sample space is huge, if you do the counting by hand, you write the outcome on your paper one at a time, that will take a long time. So when the number of flips or the number of trial is not three is a huge number then you cannot use the sample space you can but it will take maybe 11 hours to draw the entire sample space so in that case we have to use the binomial formula so the binomial formula is starts with a combination n trial which is n equals to three we, because we do this three times and then x is the number of heads and then p is the probability of head so which is equals to 0 0.5 and then the fail is 1 minus the probability of success that is also equal to 0.5 because the probability of getting a tail is also equal to 0.5 so the first one we have zero success so that will be 3 choose 0 and then you have 0 0.5 you raise to the x power and then 1 minus 0 0.5 you raise to 3x n minus x power so here um, the 1 minus 0.5 don't just write upon 5 just write that express that as 1 subtract the probability of success and then the exponent don't write 3 I want you to write 3 minus 0 I know that equals to 3 you don't need to tell me that but I want you to put that as a 3 minus 0 and then the next one is 3 choose 1 success so that is 0.5 raised to the first power 1 minus 0.5 3 minus 1 and then 3 choose 2, 0. 0.5 to the second power, 1 minus 0. 0.5 raised to 3 minus 2 and then the last one is a 3 hat so that is 0. 0.5 raised to the third and then 1 minus 0. 0.5 we have 3 minus 3 so uh, if you watch the previous part you know how to use your calculator to evaluate this 
binomial formula. So this one, this time, the purpose of this video is not discussing calculator. I will just give you the answer that is 0 0.125, which is equals to 1 over 8. That is 0 0.375. That is equals to uh, 3 over 8. This one is also 0 0.375. That is equals to 3 over 8. And then the last one is 0 0.125. That is equals to uh, 1 over 8. If you find the sum of the decimal, the sum is equals to 1. All right. So now what I am trying to do next is I want to catch this line. How do I get this? I want to catch this line. OK, so we have 3 over 8 because 3 out of 8 outcomes satisfy two heads. Now, what I am trying to do next is, hey, I want to make an argument in here. Look, you have HHT, HTH, and then THH, right? So to me, isn't that uh, the order is important, right? So it looks like you start with a two heads and then one tail. Now look, 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 look at the next one. You put the tail right in the middle. So it looks like you are switching the H and T to generate more outcome, which is what we do back in a permutation, right? So if you don't remember what permutation is, you should go, you should wa wa watch my other video because I clearly explain the difference between permutation and combination. Now, HHT, you have one outcome. If you switch the, these uh, elements or these letters around to generate more outcomes, then you are considering the order, right? So when you consider the order, then you have to use permutation, right? But in this binomial formula, they use combination. So one argument that I want to make is, hey, maybe the formula is totally wrong. So when you do binomial, you should not start with a combination. You should start with a permutation and permute x. So the whole formula is wrong. Is that really wrong? Let's find out. So what I am going to do next is I want to expand that formula. So this one is, is here, right? So that is the binomial formula. So I'm going to write 3, choose 2 and then 0 0.5 to the second, 1 minus 0 0.5. So 1 minus 0 0.5 raised to 3 minus 2 power. And then what is that equal to? So 3 choose 2, that is equals to 3. And then 0 0.5 to the second power, I, I know what that equals to, but I want to write it out. So when you do binomial, it is more important to just write it out, expand it. And then 1 minus 0 0.5 is equals to 0 0.5 and then raised to the first power, right? So it looks like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 that satisfy the probability of head and then probability of head and then probability of tail. You multiply them, you get a probability, right? So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you multiply them, great, then you have a probability. 1 over 8, all right? And then you take the 1 over 8 times 3, all right, you have 3 over 8, then you have your uh, 0 0.375, right? So that is equals to 0 0.375, or you can do a 1 over 8, right? Why is this multiplied by 3? Because other than HHT, you also have HTH, and you also have THH. That's why you have to multiply by 3. So 0.5 times itself 3 times, you only take care 1 of the three elements in the x equals to two row, right? So that's why you have to multiply by three. So now we now we are still stuck right here. So you have HHT. When you do HTH, you are moving the T around to generate more outcomes. That is exactly what we do in um, permutation. So the problem is why combination, but not permutation. What is the difference between combination and permutation? Permutation is order matters, right? So the order is important. And then for combination, the order, we don't worry about the order. Okay, we don't worry about the order. Combination, so you have three families, like taking a family portrait, so they take their favorite position, you take a picture, and then done, they walk away. I am not going to let them switch position to take more pictures. So, okay, stand there. I take a picture, done, walk away. That is combination. But for permutation, you let the family members walk around to generate more pictures. Okay, so let's say uh, I insist to use permutation. 
all right i am trying to use permutation i'm trying to say maybe the entire binomial formula is wrong it is supposed to be a permutation not a combination okay let's force that so we use combination so let me write the three outcomes again so you have h h t and then h t h and then t h h right i got this from the sample space now what if you use permutation if you use permutation that means the order is important order is important that means you put a tag on each edge so using the freak for the first outcome consider the first x this uh, outcome individually so if you force to use permutation that means instead of h h t you are thinking about this h1 h2 t you are think you are treating two h two i two uh distinct h you are saying that the first head and the second head are not equal so that means you can go h2 h1 t so the so the next one h1 t h2 and then h2 t h1 you can switch the two h to generate more outcomes so this one is t h1 h2 t h2 h1 so instead of having three outcomes so instead of having three over a so now you have this if you consider permutation then that will be six six outcomes not three if you use permutation so that means if you use six this this six right here so that brings me a question that this is supposed to be a six okay so if i consider permutation so this number is maybe it's not a three it's a six because if i use permutation i expect to get something else all right let's compare the difference between uh, using a combination and then using a permutation now before i write that so look at uh, the 0.5 and the 1 minus 0.5 so look at each one of this so look at these four multiplication so they are all the same we have 1.5 multiply two more 0.5 right so basically for the for the uh product of the last two items we are multiplying three copies of 0 0.5 together so the only difference is the combination the combination is what determines the first product so let's take a compare let's take, take a look at the comparison right here so i am going to show you the three choose one three zero one and then three choose two and then three choose three so this one i already did the math for you so this is a one this is a three this is a three this is a one and then what about a permutation three permute zero three permute a one three permute a two three permute a three so that is equals to one same that is equals to three same but these two are not the same this is a six this is a six so this six is that six right here and then what about this six this is a one this is a six so there is a difference between the one and six and then there is a difference between the three and six how do you explain the other sex so here is how we explain the other sex so this is supposed to be a one three choose three is equals to one so if you go back to the table three choose three is right here right but what if that is a six what does that mean can you give me a picture so the last one is h h h if you consider perm if you use permutation then that will be h1 h2 h3 so that means this is one of the outcomes h h h is no longer one individual outcome i can expand that to six outcomes so it can be one two three it can be one three two it can be a uh, two three one it can be a two one three it can be a three one two it can be a three two one of course they are all start with an h all right so instead of one i have six outcomes so six outcomes not one if you use permutation so that is the difference if you enforce permutation the last two uh, probability will be different but is this true can i use permutation now think about this just think about the, the blue one you toss a coin three times you obtain three heads are you going to move those heads around no 
the answer is no. So let me tell you, even though you flip three coins simultaneously, okay, you have coin, 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 three coins, you flip them, okay, just like this. You have a coin, you have a coin, you have a coin, right? You flip all three coins and then you get a head and a head and a head. Are you going to move these coins around? Are you? The answer is no, you cannot. A head is a head. You don't move these heads around. So you get three heads, the, the business is finished. We are not moving these three heads around. So that means if you consider permutation, moving the three heads around, that is wrong. If you take this action, moving the three heads around, then you are wrong. So back to the green. You have HHT, right? You have HHT right here. What if you consider permutation? If you consider permutation, then you are not taking this as one outcome. So you have that as a base. And then based on that, you are switching the, the two H around. So that means you flip three coins. So coin, coin, coin. You have a H, H, and then T. So that is what's on your table. And then you use your two finger and then switch these two heads around and say, hey, I just get two of this. Is this move correct? That doesn't make any sense at all, right? Because a head is a head, right? You cannot switch those two coins and say, hey, look, I got more new outcomes, right? So that is why we have to use combination because if you use combination, once you get the HHT, then that is locked, done, end of the business. You get HTH, done, end of the business. THH, done end of the business. So that means three outcomes goes to X equals to two. And then the very last one, three head, you get this and done, end of the business. You have three coins on your table and then the heads are facing up, done. I am all done, just one out of A. So that is correct. If you switch the heads around, then that will be wrong. So this explains why we have to use combination in the binomial formula and we cannot use permutation in the binomial formula. So that explains why. In case you still want me to show you the first two rows, x equals to zero and x equals to one, right? So let's take another color for that. So x equals to zero, x equals to zero, we have tail, 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 right? But how come, the, uh, how come this is a one and this is a one? Because you don't have a head to switch. Right? So let's say x equals to one. What outcomes do we have? We have one head, right? So that will be HTT and then THT and then a TTH. How come this is a three and this is a three? The reason is if you consider this and you want to force to use permutation, you can't do it. There is no X for you to move around. The X stands right there. There is no an, a second X for you to move it. So if you are thinking about this problem, so maybe it is good to, to make this as a mini research, ask students to get into groups and then uh, present their ideas in, in, in front of the whole class. So this is a great mini project. All right, back to the yellow. So there is no head to switch around and that's why the first two, the, the first two, the combination and the permutation, they are both one, one and three, three because there is no head to switch. So. Uh, when if you are assigned to do this mini project, you have to think about the, the two hats and the three hats. So that's where the magic is. All right, so that will be the end of this video. If you think my discussion is helpful, let me know below. Do you think that is good, bad, or you want, to do, want me to do more? Let me know in the comment section below. If you think that is helpful, thank you. Share that for me, put a like, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your help really much. I see you all in the next video. Signing out.